Good morning, everyone. I'd like to think of Melaine Smith as we sing this prelude, and, and also, of course, this is Communion Sunday as well. If you could join me, please, in the call to worship that printed in your bulletin. God, who flung the stars into the night sky, rejo rejoices over all creation, especially us. Christ, the word of joy and life, fills all creation with hope, especially us. The Spirit, who breathes life into emptiness, gives all creation the gift of peace, especially us. And now the prayer of invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God,
extending the peace. The peace of Christ be with you. I greet you in Christ's name. Let us now greet one another. One of the things that we do at every time of worship here at Asbury, particularly at our 1015 service and in our chapel service, is to light our peace lamp. It occurs to me that there are many things that 
require our prayers for peace. We have a world that is in turmoil, places where people are fighting and dying. And yet, there's one thing that we often overlook in our opportunities to pray together, and that is the place in which we live, the environment in which we exist, the place that God has given us stewardship over to manage and to love and to care for. So as we think about our missions of peace, our, our commitment to peace, in whatever way we may show that forward, continue to think and, as we do, pray together. The world is filled with your glory, and you've given us eyes to see it, ears to hear it, a nose to smell it, hands and mouth to touch and taste. Thank you for the taste of fresh strawberries, for the way their sweetness symbolizes summer. Thank you for the beauty of roses, their fragrance, the delicateness of their petals. Thank you for the sun and the wind after so much rain, your love surrounding us in so many serenitary ways. Bring life in our own hearts, which are in places dead and cold, we have relationships that we've given up on. We think peace can never come between warring nations. We can't see a way to stop environmental destruction. Right in the midst of the muck of our despair, you plant a seed of hope. Help us nurture the knife in the small steps for peace. A kind word even when someone is mean to us faithful prayers for the people of warring countries and the gift of agencies that work for peace. For a small step of conservation, the step of noticing the world, not walking by, taking care and giving care to the lives of the creatures with whom we share this world. Peace comes to the world in pieces, small pieces, which you piece together in ways too mysterious for us to understand, the finest seeds growing beyond our wildest hopes. Prince of peace, Prince of all pieces, be our savior now and forever. Amen. This morning, I ask you to look to your left and right and you will probably find some red pads. We ask you to take advantage of registering your attendance with us. We also want to welcome anyone who is a visitor here for the first time. We have a welcome center at the back of the sanctuary, and we invite you to stop there, if you will, as you begin to take leave of the church. We have a gift for you, and we'd like to welcome you with a, a personal greeting as well. Is there someone this morning who's planning to do a mission minute? There is. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Pam. Yes, hello. Um, I'm a member of the mission committee. I'm Pam Quimby, if you don't know me. And uh, I want to talk today about Dr. Benjamin Rudd. Um, as many of you are aware, Dr. Rudd will be traveling to Ethiopia in early August to assist in setting up medical facilities with his colleague and friend Jeffrey Thompson. When Ben made the church aware of his trip, he mentioned that although he didn't need any financial assistance of his own with his trip, Jeffrey could use our help. So the mission committee has authorized a donation of $500 to his cause. If you would like to make a personal donation in addition to this church one, please see the letters in the back table that give you instructions on how to give as an individual. In addition to this financial assistance, Ben has asked if Asbury could help him out with some materials for the children at the clinics. He has asked if we could supply some crayons, coloring books. By the way, Ollie's has all that stuff. It's really good and it's cheap. Um, paperback children's books, they got a lot of those, um, to take care with him, to take with him when he, when he goes. 
These items will help occupy the children while they wait for care. They have little or no materials as of right now. If you would like to help out with this, please bring your donations to church ASAP as soon as possible, as time is running at short and August will be here before you know it, and he'll be leaving. As Ben mentioned, he would like us to pray for a safe and successful trip when the Lord guide him and keep him in his loving care while he's on this trip. So we have, uh, so we at Asbury have many ways we can join him in his mission. So any help is appreciated. Thank you very much. One of the things that we uh, have discovered in the past year, at least I've discovered, and I, I think that's safe to say that others as well probably have, is that hidden somewhere in the, under a bushel uh, is a fellow by the name of Paul Simmons. Oh, under a bushel? No. Uh, you know, uh, you got to turn that on if you want to talk to me. Uh, what? I'm, I'm hard of hearing, so you need, you know, need to... Uh, anyway, um, hidden under a, a, a bushel over there is, is a fellow by the name of Paul Simmons, and we keep discovering gifts and talents that Paul uh, ha, has kept from us for such a long time. One of those is his gift of doing children's stories in children's time, so I wanted to uh, offer him an opportunity to be a part of this service this morning, since we're making a very special occasion out of today and uh, offer him the opportunity to greet the children who are here this morning and, and share a story with them. So, Paul, thank you for accepting my invitation, and we are deeply blessed. You could have just said, children, come on down. It would have been the same thing. Come on, guys. William, you're in this. Come on. Don't just sit over there. Bring him down. Where do they go? Come on, I'm going to need you. I got her. Pop. You too, Nikki. The nice thing was, Reverend Schilling gave me a whole thing to say. <laughs> That's kind of the way that goes, isn't it? Just when in doubt, blame when, somebody else. It's right? always somebody else's fault. It's never mine. Good morning. Good Lord. Let's try it again. Good morning. I'll start over here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Much better. I want to talk to you a little bit about making friends and how Jesus did it along with everyone else. First thing, stand up. Stand up and look at whoever brought you and make sure they nod yes that you can talk to me. You should never talk to strangers without mom or dad or grandparents' permission. I got a yes here. Dan's thinking about it. <laughs> It's okay. I got it. Sit down. Everything's going great. Did you ever wonder what it was like for Jesus to walk around? Everybody wanted to be friends with Jesus, almost. You know what the problem was? People did not really understand him. The ones that were in power just thought he was just there to take away their power. But he wasn't. He was there to make friends and have people work with him about stuff. So this morning, we're going to learn how to say hello and greet somebody so they know who you are. Ready? Stand back up. You know what we need? We need Reverend Schilling and Pastor Penny to come down. You know what? If they're going to be involved, they're going to be involved, aren't they? That's right. Okay. What's your name? Abby. Abby. Jayla. Jayla. And William, how are you? I'm Paul. How are you? We good? You know what? You got, oh, we got to do this right. We've worked on that. <laughs> Rehearsed, did you? We always do. You know, when you say hello to somebody, the best thing to do is to make sure they know who you are and what you like, isn't it? So this morning, we are going to introduce you guys to Reverend Schilling, who is going to do the service today. He's the taller one by far. Say hello. Hi. 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 Hello. 
I and think he's a shiring, tiring type over here. You know? Well, he really isn't, believe no, me. But, he's just, just, uh, but now, well, with the word of God and the person that's going to help us over the next couple of years, Pastor Penny, would you like to say hello to the kids? Hi, I'm Penny. What's your name? Hi, Abby. How old are you? Five? Are you going to kindergarten in the fall? Oh, that's going to be so much fun. And you're Jayla, aren't you? Yeah, you came to my house the other day, didn't you? You and Grandma brought me dinner. It was so good. And you're what, four? And you remind me of my granddaughter with all that curly hair, right? Let's see, you. Well, I was good. No, I'm going to get right up here. Never. No, 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 we're good. Turn around. And you are? William. William. What can you tell me about you? How old are you? 14, so 8th, 9th? 9th grade. Going into 10th? Going into 9th? Okay. So what do you like to do? Sports. What kind of sports? Um, football, lacrosse, swimming, baseball. Okay. Do you have a favorite national football You better league? be careful with the answer to this one. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Is that really your favorite team? <laughs> Very good. Do you have a favorite team? Okay, good. I'll convert you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Penny. Maybe Guys? No. These two help us to understand Jesus, don't they? This is where you say yes. They help us understand Jesus, right? <laughs> Abby, you got that? Good. They will be here to help you anytime. You can ask them any questions you wish because moms and dads and grandparents have all said it's okay. All right? So they're now your new friends. Let's say hello to them. Loud. Hello. Hi, William. <laughs> hello. Hi, Newton. Hello. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. Hi, Jayla. Yeah. Would you guys pray with me for a second? Dear Lord, thank you for the children. They are our future and the future of Asbury United Methodist. You need to watch over them and help guide them with our new leadership at the church. We are so blessed to have them and Pastor Petty with us for quite a while, at least the next two years. We'll have to talk to her a little more. God and I will do that. But God, we thank you so much for this day. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. 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 Now you, you can go sit down now. now okay. we can go sit yes, down. I got something for you guys. Come here. We don't get the treats. No. No. We have to go back and sit down. Take two today. Two's good. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. I got, your parents want them? William's parents want them. He gives them candy. They're in the brown box here if anybody needs to know. <laughs> Thank you, Paul.
light to a world where wrong seems right. What could be too great a cost for sharing life with one who's lost? Through his love, our hearts can feel all the grief they bear. They must hear the words of life that only we can share. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, he's the The scripture reading this morning is taken from the New Testament Gospel of First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 12 through 28. I'll be reading from the New International Version this morning. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all, hold on to what is good, and reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Grant all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all brothers and sisters. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The word of God for the people of God Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, as we gather here this morning, we pray that you will send your spirit upon us. We pray that you will help us to open our hearts and minds to your word, to your guidance, into the strength that we gather from being here in the presence of this company. Lord, help us to leave this place today better able to love and serve you both in time and in place. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts then be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen.
We listen to Paul's word this morning to the church in Thessalonica. Judging from his comments in the New Testament elsewhere as well, he may have felt a, a greater affection for the church at Thessalonica than for any other congregation. The believers there didn't just talk the talk, they walked the walk. In doing so, they were emulating Paul and Silas and Timothy who had brought them the gospel. The threesome had taken great pains to live an exemplary life among them. The demonstration of a Christ-like lifestyle lent credibility to the apostles' message and the result led many Thessalonians to be persuaded. Even those who were not recognized as power messengers, the others claimed that Paul and his, his group, his followers, had turned the world upside down. Even after the apostles left and things quieted down, the new believers were left with an important reality of the faith. That lasting change occurs over time. That's why Paul's letters call for responsible long-term progress and the refusal to lose hope. He reminds his leaders by living his example They should work as well, he says, to keep on working together rather than burning out in the midst of doing good. Friends, we here at Asbury United Methodist Church have an exciting opportunity before us. There is a new relationship to be developed with one who has come to spend the next two years with us. The process has already begun to unfold with Penny's appointment and arrival here to worship with us this morning, and I personally like to add both a warm welcome and a few observations about how we might continue to build and solidify our relationship with her as we work together. So with that said, what does this morning's scripture have to tell us about welcoming a new pastor? First, I'd like to suggest that we let our new pastor dream her own dreams. Expect that she will have a vision of her own future with us together. And don't necessarily tie it to any vision that has been spoken to us here in the past. It may be something completely new. Pray that God would make that vision clear, not just to the pastor, but to all the leaders of the church and the congregation. And that when it is made clear, that there would be an effort for all of us to marshal the forces and move forward with that vision. St. Paul says in our scripture this morning, do not quench the spirit. I think it would be safe to say that it would be quenching the spirit if folks didn't cooperate and support the vision that God has clearly given the leadership of this church. Next, let your pastor be herself. Expect differences from anyone and everyone who has ever been in this position before. Her approach to ministry may differ from that which has been given us in the past. Just let her be herself. Appreciate her uniqueness as a person. In the 21st century, the pastoral role is a very challenging one. The pastor may sometimes experience tension in her role. On one hand, she's supposed to be the spiritual leader of the flock, and on the other hand, she is reimbursed or paid or hired, supported by the people of the church. So sometimes people can think that she is an employee instead of our spiritual leader. And when that happens, that's a recipe for problems. So let her be herself and let her lead in ways that will keep everyone focused on Christ. And then, Commit to stand with her through the hard times. You know hard times are difficult times. Eventually they will come. Conflict is inevitable in most places. After all, we are human beings. Many times there is difficulty and tension. People have different goals, and instead of being employed-minded, let's set ourselves in a relationship with the pastor as people with a covenant, something akin to a marriage. We know in marriage, divorce is not the first solution. Divorce is the absolute last. Let me share a brief story with you. There was a a Lutheran farmer who was talking to his neighbor. He was telling him about that new pastor that had come to his church. And he wasn't quite sure about this new person. That gave the neighbor a chance to start out complaining about his pastor. 
And the first person, the farmer, said, well, you know, we're not quite sure about this young man, but we've been praying about this and we've been hoping that he is good. We're going to be grateful to God if he is. But if he's not, we're going to make him even better. And that's the kind of attitude that should accompany any congregation as they welcome a new pastor. I have every reason to believe that the person that Asbury welcomes today is going to be excellent. However, there may be differences, and so help her and support her in every way. And then let your pastor lead. Let her lead. You know it's difficult for any pastor to come into a new situation, and before anything is on the table, she senses your anxiety. For whatever reason, you wonder, is this the right choice? And so I challenge you to give Penny your allegiance. Follow her as she follows Christ. Again, St. Paul says to us this morning, esteem pastors very highly in love because of their work. And when she gets out in front and says, okay, we're going in this direction, give her a chance and follow. And then by all means, release her from being your best buddy. If a church has above 100 people in attendance or even membership, that's more than anyone can engage in socially. You know, you hardly even know 60 or 70 people here by, the first, by their first name, even if you've been here for a long time. Let the pastor love you. She will, of course, but don't try to monopolize her time. If a person is stretched too thin, they will be ineffective. I know that when new pastors come, folks have all kinds of expectations. Just give those over to God. And if you're able to spend time with her, fine. If not, let that be okay too. Then look for opportunities to encourage and affirm your new pastor. Again, I'm preaching to the choir. Just from my experience, I know from verbal comments, from written notes, that you are all a loving bunch. And I know that Penny is going to experience that as well. So look for ways to affirm and encourage her in every way possible, and in prayer especially. The church will reap huge benefits. When you pray, pray for the pastor. And finally, stay focused on the big picture. When we get focused on issues, and there are many issues to focus on, they can become idols, and then they lead to divisiveness. Ask this question. Will this issue or concern be important in a year from now? Or will it matter five or ten years from now? Or better yet, will it matter in the context of eternity? Remember, the big picture is loving one another, and that will go on for eternity. Love never ends. Love never fails. Be at peace with one another, the scripture says, as far as it depends upon you. In closing, let me say personally that it has been an incredible privilege to worship with you this morning and to be a part of reading Penny and welcoming her here. I hope that what I've shared with you will be helpful in the new relationship as it unfolds and that you will look at these things over the next few months as we work together to build a stronger Asbury United Methodist Church. In it all, trust God, work together, and support your new pastor. And I guarantee that even though we have had a tremendous fruitful days in the past, that the best days for Asbury are still in the future. May it be so. Amen. Our hymn is number 399, Take My Life and let it be.
I think it's time, folks. I think it's time to, at least in a certain way, formalize our greeting with Penny this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to affirm our new relationship, to join together in a very personal word of welcome. So I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. Penny and I are going to come down front here for a minute. And if you would like to join us, please do so. Bring your, bring your bulletin with you, please. Those of you who are a little bit more reticent and shy, please continue to follow us in your bulletins from your seats. So Penny? You look like you're the center of attention. Or the circling of the wagon. Yeah, circling of the wagon, yeah. Exactly. She will want a, ma a microphone if you, if you still have one. Yep. You just did. You just did. Oh, no. That would not be a good thing. Dear friends, today we welcome Reverend Penny Farrington, who has been appointed to serve as our pastor. We believe that she is well qualified and been prayerfully appointed by the bishop of this conference. Penny, you have been sent to live a message among us as bearer of the word of God, minister of the sacraments, and a sustainer of the love and order and service of discipleship of this people. Today, I affirm this commitment in the presence of this congregation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as people committed to participate in the ministries of the church, by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, will you cho who celebrate this new beginning support and uphold Penny in these ministries? We reaffirm our commitment to support you with our prayers, presence, gifts, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger. Who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, strengthen and sustain us in our ministries together with Penny as our pastor. Give her and us patience, courage, and wisdom so to care for one another and to challenge one another that together we may follow Jesus Christ living together in love and offering our gifts and talents in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you call us to go into your service and to spread the message of salvation of your Son. Bless richly, we pray, your, present, your, your servant, Penny, for entrance into our fellowship. Fill her with the power of your Holy Spirit and let her find with us an open door for the word. We also pray for your church on earth Equip us with all the spirit of willingness that we may encourage and witness about you the profession of our mouths through our, and thought through our wit, excuse me, and through our way of living. Grant us all to participate in your strength and joy so that we can enter into the anxiety and suffering of the world to be radiating and make alive that hope which Christ gives. All this we dare to pray of you, for you are for us the Father of mercy and the God of all grace. You are the Son and Savior of the Redeemer. You are the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Helper, and the Giver of life. Blessed be you. Amen. And I ask you to turn and join us in the center of the, the circle, Penny. And those of you who would like to join, you can either join hands around her or come and, and lay hands, which is a... And join me in this, this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord 
confidence upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Will you join me in the hymn as we have printed in your bulletin? Please be seated. Each of us is really blessed, I think, in our relationships and the fellowship that we share here at Asbury United Methodist Church. We have the opportunity not only to worship together, but we are a very special part of one another's lives. We share each other's joys, and as we do, they are multiplied, and we share each other's burdens, and hopefully as we do, they are lightened as well. So this morning, we have an opportunity to share our joys and concerns, and the ushers have microphones for you, so if you'd like to share something, please let us know. Are there joys and concerns that that you'd like to lift up? Somebody's got to break the way. There's one over there. I have both a joy and a concern. My joy is I had a long conversation by telephone with um, a good friend. Whose name? How about Jane? My concern is um, Jerry Borland. You may remember him as Hope Marston's friend, and they went down from the the building, repelled from the building at 80 years old, both of them. Had surgery on Friday, and it didn't come out terribly well. So I'm asking for prayers for him. And Marjorie Brower was the one I had the long conversation with. (laughs) Well, just keep prayers for a friend of mine, Richard Gorman. Uh, I was fishing with him in Quebec for a week, what, two weeks ago, and he just had a massive heart attack. Um, One of the healthiest guys I know, you know, a Marine, 200 push-ups, 200 sit-ups a day, and uh, none of it helped. He had, he's in pretty bad shape. 
Uh, they had to replace a valve and a blockage, and he's still on a respirator. So I want to keep his heart resting for a little bit. He's down in Syracuse. So, Richard Gorman, keep him in our prayers. Indeed. Yes. We need to lift up Linda Patman, who apparently is in the hospital now, has had surgery, and will need will need additional surgery. So if we can keep her in her prayers. Okay. I've heard indirectly. Would you like to, to share this morning about uh, our Barb and uh, and Jane? Yes. Pam Quimby and I had the opportunity to travel to Carthage this week and see um, Barbara Heasley, who is a patient at um, Country Manor, as well as Jane Munson. We were just so excited to see how well they are doing. Um, both of them look fantastic especially um, Jane. She says that she wants to stay there. She's with a lot of different ladies. She looks wonderful. She talks very clearly about her decision to be there. And for that, we thank God. And Barbara also. She looks wonderful. She looks the best that we have seen her in months. But unfortunately, she has other ideas about what she wants to do. <laughs> so anyways, keep them in your prayers. We need to remember Malene's family as well. Toby, I got a, a uh, blessing and a great joy. A week ago... I had the opportunity to celebrate my 50th class reunion at Copenhagen. Uh, and it's amazing how old my classmates all look. It really is. But the message I gave to the senior class was, don't blink. Because if you blink, you'll be sitting at the 50-year table in no time at all. And I told them it's their job to cure oldness. So we could all be here for their 50th. But we had a great time. We really did. Well, we all know what the cure for oldness is. And you know, it's not necessarily so bad as, 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 we, as we, uh, we anticipate the, the possibilities for the future. Yes. Other joys and concerns. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, as we gather here this morning, we give you thanks with joyful hearts for new beginnings for the opportunities to open ourselves to the opportunities that you will show us, that you will guide us into the future with hopes newly renewed, with visions solidified, with confidence, with strength and humility. We thank you for Penny and for the gift of her presence among us and for all that she will do to help us and enable us as we move forward to become better stewards of your word. We thank you for the opportunity to welcome her this morning and to worship together. We thank you for the gift of the presence of your spirit as we have asked your blessing upon her and upon us. As we continue our worship together, Lord, we, we pause to give you thanks for the gifts of love and for the gifts of friendship, for the concerns that we have offered up for all of those that have been named, for those in special need, for those whose lives are being healed and those who continue to need healing. We pray that you will help us to be special witnesses of your gift of presence and love in this time for them. Help us to have words and help us to be present in comforting ways to those who have special needs. We pray, Lord, for all of these things and for all of the things that are kept secret in our hearts, but which we hold before you this day. We pray these things and all things in the name of the one who came and taught us to pray and say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has richly blessed us. Now he gives us the opportunity to share the gifts of our hands for the work of the church. The ushers will wait upon us for our morning offering. Will you join me in the prayer of dedication? It's found in your bulletin. Lord, you have chosen to put your blessings in us, fragile containers of questions and rules and fears. So give us courage to offer these gifts to you in trust and hope, so that all might know of your grace and peace in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you join me now in our service of Holy Communion? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. We gather as, people, as God's people, believing the promises fulfilled in Christ. We do not need to confess out of dread or fear, but in trust that God is faithful to forgive us and make us new. Join me as we pray and say, how foolish we are calling God to think we could be happy when we sit in seduction's comfortable seats and scoff at your call to discipleship or run down the easy streets of sin rather than following Jesus. Forgive us, author of life. Keep us from our silly selfishness 
as we seek to become these branches children can climb on, as we hope to provide shade for fellow pilgrims, as we long to be continually nourished by the living water of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hear these comforting words. We are no longer blown about by the winds of the world. We are grounded yesterday, today, and tomorrow in God's forgiveness, hope, and love. May the God of joy be with you. We are called to share the gospel with all we meet. Join in singing God's praise as we gather around this table. You stood among the chaos, ever watchful God, and called forth creation in all its beauty rooting oak trees in the rich loam of your word, watering seeds with the Spirit's showers, using goodness to pave the paths through the garden of hope and grace designed for, your, for those you shaped in your image. You called to us to pray close attention, but we chose to follow sin's directions, making death our ultimate destination. Prophets were sent to take witness, placing our, their hands on our hearts to offer testimony concerning your hopes. But we continue to listen to temptation's broken promises. So Jesus came to show us how to walk in the right paths, to do the right things, to be people of righteousness and justice. With those who listened to your heart, with those who stumble along the way, we lift our praise to you. In your holiness, tender God, we find life. And in that blessing named Jesus, we find our friend. Seeing us sitting in chairs warmed by foolishness, he came to pull us to our feet, to offer us a seat handcrafted by his grace. Noticing how we, intent, we tended to listen only to seductive whispers, he came singing songs composed in the depths of your compassionate heart. Watching our, tenderness to, our tendencies to drift through life like dandelion seed heads floating on temptation, he came to plant us deep within your forgiveness, watering us with the spring showers of resurrection that he brought with him on that first Easter morning. And so as we walk and talk the paths of righteousness, as we long to bear witness to Jesus in your name, we speak of that mystery called faith. It is here at this table where the Spirit is poured out upon the gifts of bread and cup that we know of your love and grace made whole by the brokenness of the bread. We would go to bring words of hope to all who have been told they are worthless, to strengthen all weakened by grief and loss. Watered by the goodness of the cup, we would offer compassion to everyone who has been hurt. We would carry hope to all whose hearts are emptied by despair. And when we are gathered with our sisters and brothers around the feast, the Lamb of Glory, we will bring our songs of joy to you, planted forever and ever in the depths of your heart, God and community, holy and one. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus sat with his disciples took bread and broke it, and said to them, this is my body, broken for you. Each time you partake of it, do so in remembrance of me. 
And when supper was over, he took the cup, offered thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, saying, this is the blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. These are body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shed for you. Come at the direction of the ushers. Take this bread and drink this cup. Amen. If you wish and are able, please kneel. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Broken for you. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. Take and eat. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ poured out for you. Take and drink. Rise and go in peace. Love and serve your Lord. And the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. We join me now for after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery. You have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give yourselves others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 593, Here I Am, Lord.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Will you join me in ascending forth? Knowing us better than we know ourselves, God would have us go into the world. Trusting us better than we trust ourselves, Jesus calls us to go to serve others. Gifting us better than we gift ourselves, the Spirit fills us with all we need to be for those around us. God has brought us here, and now he sends us forth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join us for a time of reception and refreshments and an opportunity to share some time, some fellowship with Penny. This has been a broadcast of the 1015 service, Sunday morning, from Asbury United Methodist Church, located on Franklin Street in Watertown, Asbury United Methodist Church.